Good morning, everyone. We are here at Startup Kids Week 2 Virtual Kidpreneur Camp. Today is day three, and we are going to be working on value propositions. So before we get started, let me give everyone a up, quick update on what, what Week 2 is about and talk a little bit about it. So the idea that we did in week one was to understand what your idea was about and figure out how to refine an idea and pick one. Week two is about figuring out what your idea is really going to consist of and figuring out what, what you can do to make sure that the idea has a valid use in the marketplace. So that means understanding what your idea is about, who it serves, who it helps, and then figuring out features and benefits about what that idea can do in the marketplace. But before we get started, day three of each week is our local entrepreneur day. And what we do is we wanna bring a local entrepreneur from the community to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on in entrepreneurship in the community. So it's really, really important that we expose you guys to entrepreneurs who are really doing things in the local community. And this particular entrepreneur means a lot to me. It's uh, someone I've only met this year, but we met under some really, really amazing circumstances. I'm really proud to call this person my friend and a community member. So that person is Nancy Young of Art Trek. And I'm gonna have Nancy talk a little bit about what Art Trek is, who she is, and what she does. And then I'm gonna ask her a question about entrepreneurship. So with that being said, welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Thanks for the intro, Julian. Love to be here. Yeah, awesome. Tell us a little bit about Art Trek and, and who you are. Well, I'm the founding executive director. Art Trek is a nonprofit organization, which, by the way, doesn't mean it doesn't make money. It, it doesn't mean that uh, our finances are always below profit. It means that we give back to the community as we make money. So a percentage of our income always returns to the community and our activities return to the community. And we are an arts-based nonprofit organization. We work in the schools. And we work in um, all kinds of community settings with adults and kids. We work in hospitals and the prison. We'll go anywhere where we can make a difference with art as our base. That's awesome. And, That's and, awesome. And we've been around for almost 30 years. Starting with as a very, very small idea with just a few people, a lot of volunteers, friends working together. And it grew and grew and grew as the need grew. And um, we were pretty careful with how we organized things. So what's your next question? I don't want to jump ahead. Yeah, yet. no, that's, that's, uh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing all that. The, my, my, my question that I have is, what is your favorite thing about entrepreneurship? I like being able to take my ideas and other people's ideas and bring them to fruition when they're good ideas. So I guess what I like about that is we do learn how to refine ideas. Everybody has ideas and you have to mix them up together and see how can we refine something to make it manageable. And I was gonna say an idea then has to get organized and an idea has to have follow through. It has to have a place to be put. It has to be sustainable, probably needed by the community in some way. And as an entrepreneur, I think I work with good people. You have to choose people really carefully you work with. And I like keeping records of things. So we keep really sound records of money, ideas, actions, and relationships. So those are the fun things about being an entrepreneur. We just get to develop carefully, thoughtfully, and with good organization, ideas, and bring them awesome. to fruition. 
That's awesome. So one of your favorite parts of entrepreneurship, if I heard you correctly, is taking someone's idea that's inside their head or your idea that's in your side, your head and actually doing it and bringing it to life. Right. And to make something work, I think successful entrepreneurship comes to life with various steps along the way. I think a lot of people have ideas. Most ideas don't come to fruition with people. People have ideas every day. So you have to pick and choose the ideas. You, have, you really do have to organize them, place them correctly, and have follow through. That's the key, and I think the success of entrepreneurial work is the follow through. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So that, that's the most fun part of entrepreneurship. What do you think is one, one of the things that is one of the toughest things about entrepreneurship? Well, everything's a guess. It's an educated guess, but it's a guess. So the toughest thing is whether or not the public will actually join you. So you can have a great team, but if the public doesn't jump on board, then your idea falls flat. And you can put a lot of work into something that doesn't take off. So, it, and hopefully if you're smart, you don't go too far without reading the future a little bit. Going, well, we have this great idea, but the public doesn't like it or, or it's not really working. So the scariest thing is when things aren't working out and how do you redirect? We call it during the COVID-19 period, we call it the COVID pivot. What do you do to change your direction if what you're doing is not meeting success? So that's a hard part and, and a financial responsibility to people working with you. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely empathize. Right when, you, when I asked the question and the first thing that you said was the word guess, I said, I said to myself, yeah, it's the same problem I have. Um, or one of the toughest things about entrepreneurship is, is not knowing if you're right. <laughs> and everything in entrepreneurship is a guess and you don't really know if your idea is going to work if people like your idea if people think your idea makes sense or if people are going to buy your idea so today we're going to hear about a bunch of ideas that people are uh, doing and kind of seeing what that what that's going to take us uh, we did have Maya raise their hand so Maya go ahead and unmute yourself um, we, my mom is like an entrepreneur, uh, who just like, who made her own business. So yeah, we don't even know if it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the tricky part, isn't it? <laughs> it's always a big investment and you hope that you're doing things uh, in a smart manner and you can do things really, really well, but for other, for all kinds of unknown reasons a business might not take off. And it doesn't mean you weren't smart about it. Um, something else happens in the community or in the country or in the state. In the meantime, laws change and you can't do your idea anymore. <laughs> there are a lot of unpredictable factors. That's, that's absolutely true, uh, Nan. And, and, and Maya, thank you for sharing. Um, do you mind sharing what your mom does? Yeah, she, uh, um, she, I guess she like takes, uh, I don't know how to explain it, I guess. It's in India, it's mm -hmm. data. Okay, that's yeah, cool. But, yeah, I don't really remember what that, she does. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's it, 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 data from India, kind of something like that, I don't remember. It's got her, uh, the name of the job is Daya Initiative. Got it, got it. Well, thank you for sharing. And, and the big thing is, is that risk. I think that's what, you're really, what we're really talking about, is that risk of failure. And, you know, in, in the few years that I've been an entrepreneur, Nan's been doing it a lot longer than I have, you sort of need to be comfortable and you sort of get, uh, you develop a little bit of an immunity and, 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 and tough skin to uh, putting out ideas and, and them not working because not every idea is going to work. And for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, you learn as much from your failures and sometimes you even learn more from your failures and that's what i think really is important here for everyone to understand is wherever you guys take this idea over the next few weeks is um it might not work it might not be a good idea 
you might have done some more research and discovered that the idea doesn't make sense to do today. Maybe it makes sense to do it later. Maybe, a, like Nan said, maybe a law that we weren't aware of affects how that's done. Maybe um, a new trend and a new product is now suddenly different and then the, the market goes in a different direction. So there's just so, my point is there's guys, there's so many reasons why your products don't work and whatever you guys are doing here today and over the next few weeks, uh, just understand that this is part of the process, right? You're learning so much from working on your ideas, refining your ideas, building a prototype and working together as a team. So I'm really proud of all of you guys for being here and I'm really, really excited to, to get started. I always like to have a little bit of fun. That's just who I am. That's part of my entrepreneurial spirit. I like to have a little bit of fun with things. So I had you guys do a fun activity, what I called the Avengers activity. And some of you um, are, have been able to participate and some of you have not been able to participate. But what I asked you guys to do is pick between Captain Marvel and Iron Man. And you had to build a product or a service for either one of them. So raise your hand, whoever wants to go first and tell us a little bit about your idea. I'm gonna pick if no one raises their hand. All right, Dr. Strange, you're up first. So go ahead and unmute yourself, leave your camera off and tell us a little bit about your idea for either Captain Marvel or Iron Man. Um, well, I, I chose Iron Man. Um, and, uh, wait, wait, um, when you, you said that I could pick any Marvel universe, what did that really mean? Um, that meant because the, there's so many multiverses, right? Because they go back in time, they go forward in time, they go into different parts. Um, if you want to even like talk about Spider-Man and that multi-universe. So that's what I meant by the multiverse. Oh, okay. Well, um, so, um, in that case, uh, can I like choose like if, if he was still in Infinity War? Yes, you absolutely can do that. Okay. Well, I um I thought up of a product from that um that like I, actually um I, I'm gonna choose like the end of Endgame when they're playing Thanos again. Absolutely. Where he, um, where he uses the, the like... The glove? Yeah. I thought up of a product that, that, um, that he can put under the glove that actually makes it so it doesn't hurt him. Okay. Tell us about the product. Well, um, I don't really know how to explain it, but like, it's just this, it's basically a, a glove under the glove that is um, made up of a material that can help him withstand the power of I am finished. Beautiful. Great. That's a great idea, Dr. Strange. I'm not sure Dr. Strange would have come up with the idea, but it was probably Iron Man himself that came up with that idea. So that, that's a really, really good idea. That would have saved his life. So in this case, you saved Iron Man's life. I think you have a, a lot of kids will thank you for that. So thank you. You can put yourself on mute and I'm going to select Maya next to tell us about um, his idea. I have one thing for. Um... Dr. Strange's, couldn't you use, like, what's the material that Captain America's shield's made out of? Uh, I think Black Panther. It's not adamantium, it's, um... Oh, um, yeah, actually... It's also Black Panther's suit, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I can, yeah. 
It's a good idea. Yeah, you could I, make it out of that. So I, for, mine I, is like, I forget the, I, do you remember the name of it? It's I like forget. uranium or something like yep, that. Yep, uranium. Yeah, uranium. Wait, no, is it, is it uranium? Hold on. It's, I uh, actually like that. Probably. Vibranium, vibranium. Yeah, vibranium. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my idea is like an Iron Man armor cleaner. Just, I don't know. I'm sorry, you said Iron Man what? Armor cleaner. He has armor cleaner, armor. okay. So tell us about that. I don't know. I guess I would just clean his armor. Got it. So is it like a solution? Is it like a brush? What is it? Um, I guess I don't know what it would be. I just maybe I, I guess it could yeah, it's like a solution or a brush or I don't know. Or even like a electronic thing. Got it. So are, is it a product or a service? Are you doing it for Iron Man or are you just giving it to Iron Man for him to do it? For Iron Man, I think. Okay. So that would be a product and you'd be yeah. selling him maybe some sort of brushes, some sort of uh, solution. Yeah, I guess. We just got someone in the chat who said they've never seen uh, the Avenger movies, and that's okay. Um, this activity was done earlier in the week. So what we're going to be doing moving forward is working on our new idea. This is just a little fun thing that helps us with idea creation, get us, gets us thinking about things. I mean, who would have thought, you know, uh, hey, well, why, don't, why didn't the movie makers make a glove for Iron Man to protect himself? Or why didn't... Why wasn't there something else out there to clean Iron Man's suit? It was always getting dirty, right? So these are the things that we just think about and help us with ideas. So don't worry about if you don't have an idea for Avengers today, that's okay. We're going to be doing, uh, focusing on your idea that you picked last week, okay? I have my own idea that's not from Avengers, but from Harry Potter. Okay, let's hear it. So in, in the fifth one, where uh, Voldemort is reading Harry's mind, some uh, some sort of machine that can help um, stop him from reaching into his dreams. That's a great one. That that's a really really a good one because they're they're connected. They're really really connected. And I love that you picked Harry Potter because Harry Potter is one of my favorite ones. Give me one sec, Maya. So. Um, is the device like something that Harry can put on his head? Is the device, tell, tell me what, what, it, what do you think it looks like? Um, maybe it should be like some sort of shield spell. Awesome, 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 that's great, that's great. Okay, put yourself back on mute and then I'll let my, uh, Maya talk for a second. Go ahead, Maya. Yeah, I kinda, this one I like that. So in another book that has magic, so like it's like a necklace kind of mm -hmm. that like when somebody tries to go into your mind it will like get warmer it'll protect you as long as like you wear it but it gets really hot so you will have to take it off that's but a good that's idea one. that's yeah. a good idea. you guys should all just team up and make one idea <laughs> all right so thank you everyone um uh for submitting ideas um on uh, this Avengers activity. It's just one of my favorite things to do. Um, I like to think about the Marvel universe and figure out, okay, well, what products did, did the movie makers not think of? What products did Stan Lee not consider in making his characters better? So it's just a fun little activity that we can get to. Let's get straight into the actual uh, portion of this. Yeah, go ahead, Hermione. I didn't go. I can't hear you. I didn't go. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know you were had something prepared. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. So, um, Hermione, do you have an idea prepared? I didn't mean to skip over you. I just you weren't here on Monday for me to when I assigned the activity. Okay. If you have an idea, just raise your hand or um, put something in the chat box and uh, I'll call on you later. So let's get back to it. So last week, everyone was working on multiple ideas and then we ended up picking one. And so this week, 
the goal of what we're doing is taking that idea and pushing it a little further. And we're going to use someone's idea. And Nan and I are going to talk about this particular idea. So this is an idea that's uh, from Black Panther and Dr. Sh uh, no, not Black Panther. I'm sorry. Uh, this is from this is from Maya and Dr. Strange. I apologize. This is a dog car harness. So what this is right here is a dog can be harnessed inside of a car, but then also that same harness can be used to walk the dog. And so I really thought this idea was quite interesting because a lot of people have similar problems uh, where, hey, you need to take your dog from the car to the actual dog park or, or wherever you, you're going with your dog and you got to take your dog somewhere. So I really thought that was, that was a really good idea. Nan, can we get any feedback or uh, interests about what this idea is? Well, I think it's a useful idea to begin with. Uh, and I think if you probably want to study the market, see if it's out there already. And if it's not, it seems like a, a really great idea because it simplifies activities for people. And you want to think about how you can make it look good. Pricing, how is it? Can you make it pretty inexpensive for people? Right. Uh, and I think it might be something especially maybe everybody could use, but older people who don't want to have to switch things out a lot could use. So I think it's a great idea. Cool. Hermione, you did raise your hand. Give me one second. Let's get through this for, for, for one thing and I'll come right back to you. Maya, you raised your hand about your idea. Go ahead. Um, oh, for the mark, when you said we should check the market for other like dog seat belts, there are other dog seat belts, but they're not like with a harness. They're more, they're more like, it's like a seat belt, like more like a leash that attaches to the like, seat belt thing or like a little car seat almost, I guess you could say. Right. Right. And so this is really, really good, Maya, that you did some research because what you're really discovering is that your product actually already exists in the market. What you're doing is you're looking at an improvement of a current product. And that's really good because the idea here is that your product already exists. That means people are selling it. People are making it. People are buying it. Right. And so that tells you that there is a need in the marketplace. Nan and I were talking about this earlier about not knowing if our idea was going to work, not knowing if people would buy our idea. In your case, you've already selected the idea, which is smart, that people are already buying your idea. You just want to improve on that idea. And I think that makes a ton of sense. So I'm going to quickly pause for a second. Uh, Hermione, go ahead. You raise your hand. Are you there, Hermione? Um, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you now. Oh, um, my idea was in the second one, there's like there's this device that, so like, like when he's in the second, in the second book, when he's in the Chamber of Secrets, um, when the bachelor comes out, he, there's this device that can protect him. Protect him from the basilisk? Yeah. Got it. Got it. So maybe like... I didn't hear you, Hermione. What'd you say? Nothing. That was my idea. Okay, cool. You can put yourself back on mute. So that, that's really, really brilliant, right? Because the basilisk uh, almost kills Harry and it was, it was uh, the phoenix who saved him and revived him. And if it wasn't for the phoenix, Harry could have died. So if Harry would have been prepared and maybe had a solution, a product or something that would have been able to protect him in the Chamber of Secrets against the basilisk. So it's a really, really good idea. And you're, you're kind of thinking through sort of the problems that Harry was involved with and what kind of product or solution would have been able to help him. So good job. Thank you, uh, well, Hermione. Um, he, do, he did have the, swor the sword of Godric Gryffindor that came out of the sorting hat. 
Right, but the sword only came out later after the sorting hat, right? So he could have been prepared and had something already um, and not rely on the, on the sword of Gryffindor. And, and the sword of Gryffindor, de de technically, he, he died by using the sword because remember, he, stu he, stu he stuck the sword in the snake's head, in the basilisk's head, and that's how the venom got in his arm because the tooth got on his arm. So he could have been a little bit more prepared. I watch a lot of Harry Potter, guys. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, put yourself, guys, back on mute, and uh, let, let's keep going on this idea. So um, here's some feedback for uh, Doctor Strange and Maya. What I think will be helpful is looking at the product. So I did some Amazon searches and I was looking on Amazon to kind of see what's going on in the marketplace and sort of what's, what is actually, what, what devices they have. What I recommend is also going on YouTube and looking at dog hardnesses on YouTube. What this will do is this will help you kind of see how people are marketing their products and what features and what benefits they are, are going into. And I think that'll be really, really helpful for, for, for you guys, okay? We only have a few minutes. Black Panther, can you tell me your quick idea with uh, Hermione? Um, yes. It's, uh, I drew a sketch of it. Okay. Um, send it in to me later because we don't have time for us to get in so I can put it on the screen. Just tell me what your idea is. Well, it's an automatic dog washer. So it's a little tub with a, a, a dome over it, and inside of it there's a doggy, there's a dog door, and then these little nozzles that spray water and soap that will wash the dog for you, and then there's a little trap door that'll push it and drop a towel on it. That's awesome. I don't like washing my dog, <laughs> so I think this idea is wonderful. Okay, this is a really, really good idea. Um, we will, uh, I'll get the picture of your idea here later. Okay, we all just for uh, because the, the time is going to run out here and we only have a couple minutes, we all are going to meet here back on Friday. Okay, if everyone can come back on Friday and we can, uh, I can help you prepare for next week and for the next uh, thing. But um, with that being said, I'm gonna go and give you guys your homework assignment. So I'm gonna be really quick and be a little fast only because we're running out of time. So we have something here called features and benefits. There's two different things here. So this is a feature and a benefit for an umbrella, okay? A feature of an umbrella is the cloth um, that it has. It's made out of wood, it's unbreakable. These are certain attributes of an umbrella, the length of the umbrella, how tall it is. These are features of your umbrella, how wide your umbrella is. These are all features. The benefit of an umbrella is that rain doesn't land on your body or if it's too sunny, it blocks the sun so you don't get a sunburn. So the difference between a feature and a benefit, a feature being something about the product itself and the benefit of having the product. So. In the case of everyone's idea, I'll be quick, let's use the dog washing uh, idea. Well, what's a feature? A feature is it washes your dog for you. A benefit is your dog is clean, okay? Take an example from the dog harness. A feature is it tightly secures your dog in a car. It's, it's got a secure fastening harness to it. It secures your dog. A benefit is your dog doesn't get hurt if you have to stop really abruptly or you get hit by something. So here's your homework assignment, everyone, okay? This is for everyone. And you guys can work together if you want, obviously if you want, since it's your, uh, there's two teams on ideas. I need three benefits and three features by Friday three each and have your parents help you if they don't, if you don't know the difference between a feature and a benefit. Okay. Uh, so three ideas, uh, three features and three benefits, and that'll be your homework assignment for Friday. Um, the meeting's about to end. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Dan, for coming. We really appreciate it. See you guys all later.